and I have a lot to tell you. Let's go to the map. First thing is, as you know, in Russia, as we see here in Russia, uh, Vladimir Putin was elected again as the new president of Russia, and of course everybody is saying that the elections were fixed. Well, why should the elections in Russia be different than they are in the U.S. and everywhere else? Of course they're fixed, and he was placed in office because, as I mentioned, this whole area is going to become the Soviet Union again, including Kazakhstan, and Ukraine is already in there, and Belarus is already included in this whole thing. So yes, we're going to see the new Soviet Union, and Putin's election was absolutely a sign of it coming back this year in 2012. Uh, in related news, just right here on the border uh, uh, with Iran, you know, the Soviet Union used to encompass all of this area, and they wanted Iran to be part of the Soviet Union because then they have access to the uh, Persian Gulf and the warm waters of the Indian Ocean. And so uh, information's been coming out of Iran uh, that question whether they are really a threat or not. And so... Um, they probably do have nuclear weapons. In fact, it's been reported that just two years ago, Iran paid North Korea $55 million to test a nuclear weapon, and that's uh, what was recorded in the seismographs uh, by the United States when uh, the North Koreans tested a nuclear device for Iran, which really means Iran already has a nuclear device. So are they a threat? Well, any country that has a nuclear weapon is a threat, including um, the Israelis, see? Um, but what I found interesting is Iran has the largest Jewish population in Asia after Israel does. And the Jews in Iran actually are supportive of their country and say that they live very peacefully with their uh, Muslim uh, neighbors and that they are allowed to worship their religion um, and to have freedom uh, as, as far as that's concerned. So a little different picture coming out of Iran than what we get in Western news. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, March 12th, 2012, and I'm Darko. You can check out my website, it's ggnonline.com. And on YouTube, my channel is ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. All the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description, so please check those out. Okay, I included that first video. It was Stuart Swerdlow from Expansions.com. I just put this disclaimer out there usually because I don't agree with everything that he says. Um, but uh, that was a good little video they put together there, so I thought I'd include it because I came across this article right here. Kissinger defends Putin as Russian patriot. Well, who is he appointed by, right? When uh, Swerdlow was talking about that, that he was picked uh, and that the elections were fraud, just like here in the United States, uh, like we can see clearly with Ron Paul's uh, campaign, is what? Is uh, one of these technocrats like Brzezinski, Kissinger, right? So besides saying that uh, Putin was a Russian patriot, he went on and said, I don't think he's anti-Western. He's above all a Russian patriot who feels humiliated by the experience of the 90s. He added that uh, Putin is very resentful of what he interprets as intervention in Russian domestic affairs. So a lot of things that may make sense, right? But this is uh, by no coincidence. Uh, he goes on and talks about Iran saying that uh, he added with such a likelihood in mind of Iran being uh, nuclear, he said he could understand why Israel would want to strike. So Iran's already had these weapons, right? I've actually reported on that before that video that Swerlow made about uh, North Korea testing them and that. So they already have them. They already know that they have them, and they haven't done anything with them, even though they're floating all these ships around their shores waiting for them to attack them. So British Foreign Secretary sued over U.S. drone strikes. This is in Pakistan, where the people are really riled up, and there's a coup brewing in that country, and they have nuclear weapons as well. These are some of the innocent victims of the U.S. drone strikes in northern Pakistan, estimated to have killed as well over 2,000 people since 2004. So the British uh, Foreign Secretary, William Haig, is being sued in London, in a London court for allegedly assisting the U.S. to carry out drone strikes in Pakistan. Next up, we have Marshall. He's a representative in the United States. Republican hails final passage of his bill against illegal detention. Legislator urges Governor McDonald to sign HB 1160 into law as part of the Code of Virginia. That's the individual right there. And it goes on here, says Marshall uh, today praised Virginia State Senate for passing his uh, bill to prevent Virginia's government agencies and employees from having to take part in illegal and indefinite detention of the United States citizens. 
And there's so many word games that are played, so it, this could still apply to the military. So the military, they may just have to hand them over to the military instead of their police. So, you know, so you could still be indefinitely intent, uh, detend, uh, put in detention in Virginia. It just may be by the military in a military uh, national emergency center, i.e. a FEMA camp, instead of the police holding you. It says here, Obama signs anti-protest trespass bill. I've covered this before, but just a little... Um, recent news. It says here, only days after clearing Congress, U.S. President Barack Obama signed his name to H.R. 347 on Thursday, officially making it a federal offense to cause a disturbance at certain political events, essentially criminalizing protests in the United States. It is called the Federal Restricted Buildings and Grounds Improvement Act of 2011, and it says it was passed by the House after only three lawmakers voted against it. It says here that uh, it has many Americans concerned how the bill could bury the rights to assemble and protest as guaranteed in the United States Constitution. Moving on, in Switzerland, they have their own type law. Geneva resident approve uh, tougher restrictions on protest. Residents in Geneva have approved imposing tougher restrictions on demonstrations and authorizing staff fines for violators in a referendum, a proposal denounced by a U.N. report. According to the AP, Sunday vote allows city authorities to impose fines of up to uh, $110,000 on anyone who demonstrates without prior permission and who does not abide in the agreed uh, conditions. Now, this is something that's really crazy because a lot of times uh, protests, they'll, with these protests, they'll actually get uh, approval, prior approval and permits and all that with the city and uh, they'll go out there and protest and they'll crack down on, on them anyways. So it doesn't really matter even if you do reg I mean, that's, see, that's the thing. It's guaranteed, it, maybe not in Switzerland, but it's guaranteed to you by your little constitution that you can protest. So then you go out to, and then they say, oh, you have to ask us to for your privileges, for your liberties, for your rights. You have to ask us first for those uh, well, they're not rights, they're not liberties. They're privileges then, right? If you have to ask for your liberties and freedoms from the same people that are going to take them from you, that, that they're, then they're not freedoms anymore. I'm sorry, but that they're not. So, yeah, uh, now when you go to do that, uh, they're still going to come out with the rubber bullets and, and the LRADs and the heat ray guns and uh, the little helicopters that tase you. They're still going to have all that stuff, even if you did file for a permit, because this, we're not democratic anymore. I wish people would get that in their thick heads. It's post-democratic. China Parliament unveils dissident detention powers. It says here, China's Parliament unveiled legislation on Thursday, solidifying police powers to hold dissidents in secret prompt. And we have Chinese intelligence agencies are conducting a major covert influence campaign aimed at derailing the Obama regime's military shifts to Asia. And how are they going to do that? Well, continuing build up, China boosts military spending more than 11 percent. Of course, they have their little hidden budget, too, for militarizing their police and whatnot. New police surveillance drones could be armed with non-lethal weapons. I've already covered this before about tasers being wrapped around the... Um around these little drones, these little mini drones. In coming weeks, Montgomery County Sheriff's Office uh, north of Houston says it's going to deploy a $300,000 Shadowhawk drone bought with federal Homeland Security grant funds to spy on criminals, so basically everybody because you're all criminals possibly, support SWAT team, the militarized police operations, and look for missing persons. So this is the, uh, the source of it, Taze of Our Lies, new police surveillance drones could be armed with non-lethal weapons. You go all the way down to the bottom and um, the CEO of Vanguard Defense Industries said at, at this point non-lethal devices like flares, rubber bullets, and tear gas are only sold on military versions of the drone. It says here the department had no interest in loading lethal weapons onto the Shadow Hawk. He said that the sheriff's office was open to the idea of adding non-lethal weapons like tear gas, rubber bullets, or a taser style uh, rounds to the drone. Then DARPA unveils drone slaying war laser, a weapon that used to be the size of a passenger jet, now fits on the back of a flatbed truck. DARPA is unveiling the portable laser system, hell adds, and go in there and basically it's what, something out of a sci-fi sci movie, right? Like technology that uh, has probably existed for the last hundred years. And in fact, it did. It does because it goes on and says it's high energy liquid laser area defense system. So this is just like what I've been covering recently, talking about directed energy weapons, lasers and that. And it has been around since Tesla creating their little death rays and stuff. And they say how they're going to test it in 2013 and recover that as well. Russians tested their directed energy uh, weapon and it was uh, successfully shooting uh, drones out of the sky. So it goes on here. It says that there's actually a system already made in place by American Israeli system 
uh, by, I'm sorry, Northrop Grumman. I mean, there's a video, you can go check that out. The Air Force, their ultimate goal is to equip bombers and UAV, i.e. drones, with these HELAD weaponry, lasers. While the idea of military lasers, death rays, and ray guns encourage all sorts of futurist fantasies and conspiracy theories, there will be major limitations to these weapons, saying, basically watering it down, saying there's not enough strength. And they say that about all the non-lethal weapons as what they're causing people to go death. They're popping people's eyeballs out of their socket. They're blinding them. Um, you have tear gas. Actually, I think there was one woman that lost their baby from, the, from being tear gassed so much, a protester. But hey, they're non-lethal, right? Just like the ray gun, the heat ray gun. It says here, DARPA's director will soon be a Google executive. So it makes sense because Google's, in my opinion, it's kind of militaristic, right? Uh, it comes straight from the Pentagon. So it makes sense that DARPA would just kind of cr uh, cross hallways uh, and go into the other office into Google. But DARPA is basically, a, it's a bureaucracy, or it's not really a bureaucracy because it's more like a dictatorship. They just steal funds from Americans and then transfer that to the military-industrial complex, i.e. Raytheon and Northrop Grumman, to develop weapon systems to kill you and enslave you even further. So that's the name of the game, though, of course, is using your own funds, your own resources against you. Uh, says here, Mega Upload, a boss, says, slight popular among U.S. government users. He went on there and he said that his records show plenty of U.S. government users, including members of Senate and Department of Justice. So there you go. Then we have... Uh, propaganda piece from March 11th, U.S. military unveils non-lethal heat ray gun. So remember, they're just unveiling it now like it's never been around. And I've been covering this recently because, uh, like I said, I think a viewer even spotted it in Colorado by a, a federal building uh, with FEMA vans and that. They had them staged outside under trees, outside a uh, uh, barbed wire fence and all that. So it goes on and says how it's so safe and it was... Uh, never been used in the field, but the field is the city. The field is going to be that when people are protesting as the economic uh, crisis gets further and further. It says it was deployed briefly in Afghanistan. Remember that? Well, no, it was experimented on in Afghans briefly. And it goes on and says... Uh, the beam only goes one six, uh, sixty-fourth of an inch, which gives a lot more safety. And we've done over 11,000 exposures on people. And it goes, we only had two injuries. And, and basically, it's just like the body scanners. They're emitting radiation. There is no safety dose of radiation or being microwaved. So... But uh, they don't look for cancer and long-term effect. It can be used in mob dispersal, a mob. So, yeah, if your citizen is pissed off at your government and the economy and the bank's getting all this money, uh, you're a mob. And it says here, uh, checkpoint security. Ooh, checkpoint security. Then look at perimeter security, like the federal building I was talking about in Colorado. Aerial denial, infrastructure protection, i.e. banks and uh, Kmart and Walmart, like they have their little rising tower, the U.S. military envisions a wide array of uses. Well, I bet I bet they do. And it says here, to avert accidents, they have a three-second uh, shutoff for safety. This provides the safest means. It says safety. It's so safe, isn't it? Look what the people say. Unveils, really? I saw this on Discovery five years ago. and says, this is a weapon for foreign enemies. It's going to be used against American citizens in the event of protests and uprisings. So they got to move faster, so stick with me. Military robo-choppers themselves on Afghan battlefields. So Marines are going to get these uh, UAV uh, helicopters now, again, taking out the human ele element of killing, which makes it easier to kill. So this here, a time bomb for civil liberties. France adopts a new biometric uh, ID card, all in the name of identity fraud. So 45 million fr uh, French people are going to get their fingerprints and digitized faces stored in what could be the largest biometric database in the country. Department of Justice is asking a court to keep secret uh, any partnership between Google and NSA. So the DOJ is defending the government's refusal to discuss or even acknowledge the existence of any cooperative research and development agreement between Google and the NSA. NSA whistleblower, Obama is worse than Bush, Thomas Drake on the life inside the NSA and the price of truth-telling. Court declares newspaper excerpt online forum is non-infringing fair use. Then London Olympics uh, security bill, how it soared to more than $1 billion. Well, I'll give you a good idea. UK to provide 13,000 troops to guard the Olympics. Surface-to-air missiles could be used to protect London Olympics. Then we have every movement of London Olympics will be monitoring, including yours. Homeland Security infiltrating higher education by establishing Big Brother campus recruiting and surveillance schemes at college universities helping to integrate education and the goals of national security into a single entity. An Occupy protester lost his eye after, his eyes, sorry, after police stun grenade uh, a peaceful crowd.
NYPD officer thrown in psych ward by superiors after revealing a systematic uh, corruption trail. So Lou Rockwell's blog says take a bite out of crime and abolish the local police. A new season of South Park hits back at the TSA. This is GGN. I'm Darko.